put that in next, okay? And obviously in the heat, that's just gonna all start mel melting. So it's gonna be beautiful. You I love that plate. In <laughs> then the hot macaroni. All right, so we got the, we got hot, we got sauce that was heated in a different pot going into what's now a cold pot. And then the shredded cheese, which is at best room temperature. It just doesn't make sense. It just, it, it's not making sense. It's like wiping your ass and then taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Cooking with Jack, Lazy Man's Lasagna. This has been highly requested, but there's no better person that I know who's an expert at all things pasta, but way more than that. My guest today, Chef Ed Cotton, please introduce yourself. Well, thanks for having me, Brian. Uh, my name is Ed Cotton. I'm the uh, chef and partner at Jack and Charlie's down in the West Village in Manhattan. And uh, I'm excited to be here, man. Now, before I go on with today's episode, I do want to give a special shout out to my newest sous chef level patrons, Bo and Tara, Elizabeth D. Thank you guys so much for your support. And remember, by becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new episodes, but more importantly, patron exclusive content. Tonight, we're going to do something special. My son's classroom is doing, uh, tomorrow they're going to be doing a international day. So everybody has to cook a dish from their heritage and bring it to school tomorrow. So I figured, hey, why not? I wanted to do a video on how to make a lazy man's lasagna. Lazy man's lasagna, have you ever heard of this before? I actually have. You have? I think I've made it. What, really? No, no way. Yeah. Wait, what does that mean? What does a lazy man's lasagna mean? So lazy man lasagna, <clears throat> we took like rigatoni, and um, just kind of used all the usual suspects when making a lasagna and just kind of just tossed it all together. <laughs> and uh, I think I was a teenager when we made this. There's a lot of lazy man things yeah. uh, that I've made uh, have, throughout my life. I am completely blown away. So where did you hear of this coveted lazy man's lasagna before? I don't know. I mean, I'm originally from New England. So it's like, there was like lazy man lobster pie. There was like lazy man uh, lasagna. There was a bunch of lazy things. Oh my so God. I don't know if it's indigenous to New England or I have no idea. I am completely, I have no idea. If you guys out there in the audience know where Jack is from, where he films his videos, let us know in the comments, but I'm completely blown away and shocked by this. So um, I have no idea what to expect. So let's show you how to do lazy man's lasagna. And we're gonna run through the ingredients. Then we're gonna, as we always do, we're gonna show you how to throw it all together. All right, let's take a look at throw the ingredients it all together, right now. Huh? Exactly. Okay. I have a feeling that, uh, uh, I've 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 made this exact I recipe. Think, I think this is exact. You said rigatoni, right? Yeah. I can't see the label on the thing, but it looks like either ziti or rigatoni, right? Yeah. So we got ricotta cheese in there. It looks like a block of mozzarella and just canned. I think that's classico yeah. pasta sauce. What, what's your views on? classical pasta because you you make some fantastic pasta sauces yeah um i kind of um i i haven't used like that type of brand in a number of years you know if i do buy a canned pasta sauce it's usually like um uh i don't know it, it, it's not it's it's something that looks a little bit more uh more traditional i guess and not mass produced grab your two favorite jars of sauce at the store okay Grab a thing of ricotta cheese. Okay. You're gonna need about a pound of mozzarella. Sometimes it comes in a square, sometimes it comes in a ball. You're gonna need two pounds of macaroni. Looks a, it looks a little big to be macaroni to me. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, people use, I hate the word when people just use macaroni for everything. And it, macaroni means this and that. And yeah. So I don't really know what the hell is what he calls macaroni. Normally we would put meat in this sauce but since the classroom that we're serving this to may have vegetarians, we're gonna leave the meat out. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grind up the mozzarella, okay? Now, normally you can get shredded, but it's more expensive. I think it's like twice the price. So I'd rather just grind it up. I'm not that lazy and lazy man's lasagna. Oh, oh I, I don't know. Is he breaking the rules of lazy man lasagna? When you <laughs> when you made this as a youngster, did you use pre-shredded or you, you gr grounded it? You gr uh, oh yeah, pre-shredded pre all the way, bag. Bagged up, Polio. shredded. Um, I don't even remember the brand, but um, we weren't fancy with a block of uh, mozzarella. Right, so this guy's already kicking it up a level. Yeah, he, he's already kicking my ass. 
Dude, I mean, aside from your current restaurant that you're at, can you please tell, I'm, I'm completely shocked by this, that you've made this, I guess not, you did it in your teenage years, but can you please let the audience know some of your other accolades of your career, you know, just so, just so that they know who they're watching right now. Oh, all right. Um, well, I've done a couple things throughout my life. Um, Many, many moons ago, I was blessed uh, uh, and fortunate enough to work with Kat Cora on Iron Chef America many years ago uh, when I was still rocking like my diamond earrings and stuff like that. And uh, I did that for a number of seasons. And then later on in life, also, I was uh, fortunate enough again to be cast, uh, casted on uh, uh, Top Chef uh, season seven in Washington, D.C., where yeah. I was the runner-up and the, the finale was filmed in Singapore and it was really cool but yeah I did that and then I did a number of things I was on Beat Bobby Flay fellow Beat Bobby Flay alum here. yes and I'm glad I did because I didn't want to be embarrassed uh, on national television for for losing uh, with like my my signature dish I, you never want to lose on your signature dish I've done a few things uh, uh, you know throughout my career well you recently judged Beat Bobby Flay as well right yes yes Dude, congrats on that. Yes, I, I, I guess he was uh, too scared to invite me back to compete, so he asked me to come back and judge. I, I never got called back. Maybe it's because I beat him at tacos, though. You know, that's like his thing, so maybe he has it out for me. Who knows? But no, it was great, though. It was great to to judge ed here is quite accomplished and he has made a lazy man's lasagna before and uh jack here has already stepped up the game by uh, shredding his own mozzarella yeah, well to be fair i'm i'm 45 years old okay so the last time i made one of these dishes i think i was 12 okay yeah. so right. i'm not currently making uh, this dish <laughs> so let's start with the sauce we're gonna slowly now I'm, I'm not the best at pouring this stuff. We're gonna slowly put it in the pan here. There we go. Okay, first thing that screams out to me is like, why didn't you just heat it up in the pot that you're gonna mix everything in so you like clean one less dish? I have no idea. Right? Like he has that extra big pot, might as well have heated up the sauce in there and then he could... Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I would imagine like the lazy man's anything is also to try and you know, make it as easy for you as well. I right? agree. Then you're gonna take your mozzarella that we shredded, you're gonna put that in next, okay? And obviously in the heat, that's just gonna all start mel melting. So it's gonna be beautiful. You I love that the plate. <laughs> then the hot macaroni. All right, so we got the, we got hot, we got sauce that was heated in a different pot going into what's now a cold pot. And then the shredded cheese, which is at best room temperature, and that's gonna warm up that's gonna, I'm sorry, that's gonna cool down the sauce, right? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> it just, it, it's not making sense. It's like wiping your ass and then taking a shit. <laughs> it just does not make sense. This is the key, is to mix in the cheese first. Let's get that just kind of started on the melting process. Just a little bit. You gonna see that right there? You're gonna mix that, all that cheese in there, see it start oh, to melt? Make the, sure it looks like vomit. Just get it warm. There we go. And then you're gonna dump the pasta right in on that. There we go. Look how beautiful that is. Still hot, burning hot. I'm gonna throw that in, whoop, there we go. That'll work. Okay, is this kind of similar to how you put it together when you made your lazy man lasagna? I would like to say uh, all the components are accurate, <laughs> but the steps and the procedures may be slightly off. Yeah. Yes. I, I was saying, you know, I reacted to some of uh, Jack's other videos before and as far as the ingredients set like you can make an absolutely delicious dish out of this stuff You know hands down. I mean even pre-jarred lasagna I don't think you, like guys like you and I would prefer to make our own sauce But I mean in a pinch or if you're you know cooking for family and yeah, you yeah. Need, like yeah, of course, right? There's a place and time and place for everything for sure But I definitely agree with you that his steps are just you know ass backwards. slightly skewed Yeah, you can always add more cheese if needed, but let's see where we're at first. <laughs> the kids are in for a real treat. It's yeah. not like baking. <laughs> baking has to be precise. Pasta doesn't. Okay, now you see look how beautiful that is. It's getting all melted Ugh. together. Ooh. Uh, that's that's pretty rough there. That, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen lots of that on the sidewalks. Uh, <laughs> 
late or early morning, uh, Friday mornings uh, or Saturdays, <laughs> subway stations. I, I mean, <laughs> clearly, you know, the 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 adding the pasta and the cheese had cooled down the sauce, and now that cheese not is not even melting anymore. If if that's what he's trying to achieve, right? I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to achieve at this point. I guess, but does lazy man's lasagna go into a tray and get baked as well? Yes, in theory. Okay, in theory. In, yes, okay. I, I, yeah. I don't know what his theory is. Okay. But. Oh well, I mean. For today, you, you are my lazy man lasagna expert. Yeah, you know, to, it, it should get plated into a tray or spooned into a tray and then baked in the oven. Okay. Now we're going to put in these. Now, once again, I'm doing a double batch. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fun part of cooking. I'm just going to scoop that right out there. Put that in there. And since I'm doing a double batch, I'm going to do double ricotta. Jesus. There we go. Hmm. Come on. Hopefully nobody's lactose and this is intolerant. One of my favorite cheeses. I grew up putting this in my macaroni all the time. Forget about the vegetarians. I didn't wait for <laughs> night. You're gonna have kids in their pants. <laughs> that it's mixed in. I, I, to me, that that ricotta is a bit excessive. Just a touch. I, I would like to say yes. It's, it's it's a little, you know, save some for dollops on top of and baking it in the oven. Yeah, but right. Like, I, I don't I don't know. I, I mean, it, it, if this if this were I. I would, you know, maybe uh, rather than mix, I guess it's lazy man, so you're supposed to mix everything together and make it easy on yourself. But I mean, I feel like it would have just been just as simple to like layer the pasta and the sauce kind of like you would with a lasagna yeah. in a tray, right? Yeah, like you can do it a quarter a, a layer at a time or whatever, right. you know, quarter and then throw some garnish in there and throw dump another you know, macaroni yeah, on there. Yeah, but I mean, it truly does look like vomit. Yeah. It's gonna almost be really clumped together, but it's gonna almost, did you hear that? Almost clumpy. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I agree with your word choice, you know, I, I feel like his views on his recipes are a bit skewed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just uh, well-intentioned. Yeah. But skewed. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's time to plate this. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fill these up for the kids. Uh, <laughs> this thing went, oh, it's, it's burning hot. Uh, He's grabbing this hot pan with his bare hand. <laughs> you see that there? <laughs> it's burning hot. Uh, okay, let's try this again. <laughs> All right. Time to break out the of glove. This isn't one of my smoother videos, but it's good. I promise you that. Here we go. Just gonna start dumping it right in there. Well, hope I made enough the audio on that. Yeah, I think I did. Oh my gosh, it's coming together! I swear, it's a lot more Ooh. fun when you have family around to laugh at you. Okay, so whoo, <laughs> that was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think so far, bud? Um, yeah, I'm just slightly confused, but. <laughs> Um, I haven't even seen him taste anything. Yeah. I didn't eat no salt or pepper yeah. or no no fresh herbs, no nothing. Um, did you put fresh herbs in your 13 year old you know 13 year old Ed? Did he know to put fresh herbs into his lazy man lasagna? You, you know what, Brian? I actually had a garden out in the backyard. Uh, it was a tiny little herb garden because I used to make pizzas and stuff, so now I used to just snip herbs. So. I want to say yes, uh -huh. I would throw some torn basil in there and yeah. stuff like that. But also, my dad was a chef too, so uh, I, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, I was I was raised the right way. He he, he, he instilled fundamentals yeah. at a very young age. Hey everyone, if you can hit the thumbs up button, and if you're not already, hit subscribe. It's a little thing for you, but it really goes a long way for the channel. Appreciate you, and back to the video. So that's what it looks like. Now let me give you just a few more tips before I say goodbye. The first thing you do is I saved a little bit of cheese, okay? Mm, more saved cheese. a little bit of cheese. You can take a little bit of this and just, just gently sprinkle the tops. Oh. Uh, I would say okay. just more for decoration than anything. You got tons of cheese in it. But it looks nice, gives a little contrast to it. Contrast. Yeah. There's no texture contrast in this dish uh, at all. I, <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm gonna put these in the oven in the morning before I take it to the school. But you can bake these like a baked ziti and it'll get a hard... Uh, Isn't that exactly the dish he's making right now, baked ziti? Yes. 
<laughs> it is. It's just under a different name. Another thing that concerns me says he's going to bake this tomorrow, so it's not going to his kid's school until tomorrow. I mean, that massive pasta sitting in the fridge. Hopefully, it's going to sit in the fridge overnight. Not on the counter. Not on the counter, but that goes into the oven. He has to like get that into the oven at least preheated, minimum half an hour. It's going to take at least an hour. Yeah. for that to heat through yeah. right I, I i don't i don't trust him that he would even preheat the oven no nah, probably stone cold <laughs> uh, just bake them off now yeah bake them off now actually you're probably better off just baking yeah. it off now i mean an, another issue he's gonna have is you know when it sits overnight like that everything's just gonna kind of glue together and I, I don't know. you know the pasta is gonna absorb even more of the sauce yeah and it's just gonna become super moist now when you make your lasagna do you go raw with your pasta sheets or you you cook them first if i'm making a lasagna at home i'll mm -hmm. buy the like the the no boil sh pasta sheets mm -hmm. but at the restaurant we'll roll out fresh pasta blanch it and all that stuff but at home uh you know you we're limited with like equipment right. and stuff like that right, so right. i have yeah. no problem with the the no boil barilla pasta sheets yeah 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 that's typically how i do it at home i don't make many pastas and uh, many uh lasagnas these mm, days I'm yeah more of slinging sandwiches all day but yeah <laughs> and lastly the one thing you don't want to do these plastic lids that come with these trays don't put them on right away because what you're going to do is you're going to collect all the moisture under here and then it's gonna drip back into your lasagna and it's gonna get real wet and loose, okay? It's gonna destroy. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna destroy the lasagna. The moisture is going to destroy the lasagna. I mean, that, that is a solid tip, right? I mean, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but when you consider the context of what he's made here, yeah, you know, uh, I think it's kind of moot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there was just a little tiny bit, just a little bit left over. So I'm just going to uh, uh, save this. <laughs> that, that's a little bit? Uh, I mean, that looks like three pounds. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah between the sauce and cheeses and all that stuff, yeah. that's three pounds. It's a little snack for him. I think, <laughs> I think, I think he's going to taste it on camera. Okay. Very, all right, let's... I'm going to eat in front of you because I like doing that. Mm. Oh, okay. It's amazing now. It'll be even better tomorrow. You have a good one. That's Lazy Man's lasagna. Gonna be better tomorrow. Um, I, I, if anything, it's at peak flavor right now. <sighs> Texture, flavor. We don't know if he overcooked his pasta or not. He didn't bless us with that yeah. B-roll, but yeah. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> what you think, buddy? <laughs> uh, a for effort. And... Okay. Um, yeah. I really hope he doesn't do this uh, as a profession. Uh, like he's like a local chef in his town. Oh. I, I would just pray to God. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a restaurant or anything. He just makes videos like this. So we're all we're all safe. Everyone's safe. Everyone's safe. The public is safe. You know, um, not safe from the best sauce. Not no. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, yeah, I, I kind of feel the same. I, I feel like he's well-intentioned, um, but his execution is just kind of piss poor. You can't judge a guy too much, you know, who's clearly isn't a professional, but this is my feeling on it. And this what makes this is what makes it okay for me to do these reaction videos because sometimes I, I feel like I'm punching down a little bit, you know? But this is a channel about a professional chef reacting to food videos for better or for worse. Yeah. And overall, if you're gonna put a cooking video out, into you know and put it on a public place like youtube you better you better get ready yeah for the scorn and or the praise right i mean as chefs we experience experience this all the time yeah how do you deal with with uh, the reviews negative and good and you know the ups and downs of when i was younger i really it really bothered me and it would i would get upset about it and then as you get older and more wiser i guess you start to look at some of these review these reviews from people <clears throat> and they really don't know what the hell they're talking about <laughs> you know yeah. you know we got a review one time uh, someone didn't like the atmosphere outside on our our patio on Greenwich Avenue mm -hmm. in the West Village they said the the restaurant didn't even have music and the the uh, outside uh, didn't look nice. This is Manhattan. Right. I can't change the landscape yeah. in Manhattan. So it's just like people want to complain about random things like that. But 
I, I don't let a lot of these things bother me yeah. anymore. I, but if there are things that are valid, French fries were soggy, right. or you know, s- temperatures on you know, oh, the food arrived, it was lukewarm. Yes, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, for every bad review, there's always one or two that has a nugget of truth in it. You know, most of the time, it's very subjective, and that's just par for the course for us as chefs to have to deal with and kind of navigate that. But at, at the end of the day, I think what it comes down to, I think any chef that that does this um, on a professional level, you know, or anybody who cooks on a professional level, ultimately, you just learn from your mistakes. Yeah. And it's like you're, it's basically you're putting building blocks together to get to a certain experience level where you can execute you know, at a high level. But even when you execute at a high level, we all make mistakes oh, too. Yeah. But if you're gonna put that shit on the internet, get ready to get yeah, shit on. I agree, <laughs> I agree. I mean, I think he, he was well-spoken and yeah. um, he was enthusiastic about what he, he does and what he makes and all that stuff. But, you know, I think you should, if you, I don't know where he's based out of, and I don't know if that really has a lot to do with things, but, um, if I were to create a video like that and I was him, I would want to do my due diligence. I would do a lot of research yeah. and make sure that, like, this thing's going to be... Smashing. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually one of the reasons why I uh, don't do more cooking videos. I would love to, but the amount of research and time and energy, prep, cleanup afterwards, it's, it's, it's immense, you know? Yeah. So uh, even so- someone at my experience level you know, nearly almost two decades at this point, even I am a little standoffish about putting out a cooking video on, unless it's really thoroughly researched. Yeah. You know, and even then, even then, like sometimes I forget things and it, you're editing and yeah. anyway, Ed Cotton, Chef Ed Cotton, please tell everyone again, uh, you know, where they can find more about you. And uh, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, you can definitely find me behind the stoves at Jack and Charlie's 118. We're located at 118 Greenwich Avenue on the corner of 13th, right in the heart of the West Village. And uh, I hope to see all of you people there. Yeah, awesome. And I have yet to go. And you know what? I need to visit you real soon again, Ed. Thank We're you. We're all busy. So, yeah. Yeah, we're all busy, we're all exactly. Busy. Yeah, and not, not much free time. So, uh, but thanks again, man, for coming on. Hope to have you back. Hope you had fun. And uh, guys, again, remember, don't be afraid to fail, cause it can only make you stronger. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.